What's happening good people? Welcome to the channel. I'm Wes aka Mr. Budget Watch and today I'm going to be reviewing the Alpha 1993 Explorer Homage. Now this was kindly provided by Alpha USA so definitely check out their uh, link in the description. Uh, before we get into that quick wristwatch check I'm actually wearing my Timex Q Hodinky special. The review has just gone live for this uh, a few days ago so definitely check that out. Uh, so yeah, this is the Alpha Explorer Homage. Very, very nice watch. And uh, if you, uh, well, you don't actually know, but I've uh, not really told anyone. The uh, Explorer from Rolex is one of my favourites that they do, uh, along with the uh, Daytona. Definitely a big fan of both of their watches, uh, both of them watches, should I say. And yeah, uh, so having a really nice homage is something I can appreciate. I know homages, you know, get a lot of hate in the community for being basically copies. But, you know, not everybody can afford a Rolex Explorer. So having a watch that looks like one, you know, I think there's no problem with that. It's not, it doesn't say Rolex on the dial. So it's not a fake watch. It's a homage. It's done in the same style. Yes, I know it's a little bit lazy uh, in terms of design. But you know what? I think it's such a nice look looking watch that I can sort of see past that. So anyway, uh, let's get the uh, specifications out of the way. So this one is a little 36 millimeter. So it's really, really small. It's 12 millimeters thick. It has a standard 20 mil lug width, which is really nice. Uh, we have a 44 mil lug to lug, which again, really nice and compact. We have a sapphire crystal, 316 L case and bracelet, 50 meters of water resistance. It weighs 100 gram sized up for me and my six inch wrist. And it has a screw down crown and a screw down case back. So uh, let's take a look at this watch in more detail. So starting off with the bezel, you can see it's got like a beveled edge and it is high polished, just as it is on the Explorer. As you'll know from watching my reviews, I'm not a huge fan of uh, polished surfaces, but I think in this case, it actually works quite well. So I'm not really going to complain about it too much. And that's that. So looking at the dial, you can see we've got a really nice contrasty dial uh, with black and white. So we've got a white printed minute track all the way around. And then at the 12 o'clock, we've got, well, a, an applied uh, triangle. We've got applied indices and numerals around as well. So of course, with this being a 369 dial, you get an applied three, an applied six, an applied nine, and all are loom filled. Uh, the hands are also loomed as well and in the traditional Mercedes style. Now I will admit that that's probably my least favourite part of the design is the handset. I'm just not a huge fan of it. Yes, it works with this watch absolutely perfectly, but it's just not my favourite style of handset. Uh, I'm going to be honest. So under the 12, uh, we've got Alpha logo, uh, Alpha 993 printed, and then we've got automatic, water resistant, 5 atom, which is 50 metres. So it's a really simple, clean dial, and I think that's what makes the Explorer so great, is just how clean it is, how legible it is. It's just like the perfect, you know, field, tool watch, whatever you want to uh, call it. So now we get on to uh, my first bigger issue with this watch and that is the finishing on uh, the uh, top of the lugs. So as you can see it is brushed but the brushing is very very coarse and I can actually run my finger on it and feel the different brush strokes. Uh, it also looks a little bit rough as well and to be honest I think it could have been doing with being a little bit better done because not only that it really mismatches with the bracelet it actually stands out quite a lot. And yeah, I just think it looks a little bit, a little bit off-putting actually. Uh, I think they could have done a little bit of better job with the finishing. Uh, you can see at the side we uh, have got all high polish, and you know uh, this channel by now. I'm really not a huge fan of it. I wish it was brushed, but the Explorer is not brushed, so that's why it's high polish. Yay. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's take a look at that case back. You can see it's a mix of brush and high polish. Uh, it is screwed down as well in the Rolex style, so there's actually no notches. You need a special uh, case back remover to get it off, which is a bit of a pain in the backside. And then you have a look at the movement inside, but more on that later on. So all in all for the design and build, very, very uh, solid feeling case. Uh, we forgot to mention the crown. Uh, it is screwed down, like I mentioned, and signed. But anyway, uh, build quality feels really good uh, for the watch case. It feels really nice and well put together. Really love that clean dial. Handset, 
not my favourite. Case back looks really nice as well, done in the Rolex style exhibition. Definitely gets a thumbs up from me. So now we get on to the bracelet, and this unfortunately is a little bit of a letdown for me. So you can see it's just a typical oyster style, so nothing to write home about really. We have solid links, which is a big plus, and then it gets let down with hollow end links and this really, really uh, cheap pressed clasp. Uh, uh, the clasp part is actually uh, not too bad. You can see we've got the Alpha logo and it is brushed, which is really nice. Tons of micro adjustment, which is absolutely awesome for getting a perfect fit. So that's a big, big, big plus. Gets a uh, thumbs up, but it really falls down with the press part. I mean, mill clasps are not that expensive now, so not having one is a little bit, a little bit irritating to be fair. Um, so anyway, that maybe that's a future upgrade they can make. And you can see we've got a, you know, in, uh, etched there as well. You can just see that. So yeah, it's yeah a little bit of a mixed bag. I mean, it's plenty flexible uh, between the links, you know. It's a really flexible bracelet. It's just let down by the press clasp and hollow end links. So yeah, a little bit of a shame there. So now we get on to in use. And this, unfortunately, is another, you know, a little bit of a downer for me. And it's the crown. Because it's so small and screwed down, it is such a pain to actually unscrew and screw back in. It is a nightmare to use. And with this being an automatic, it means you've got to do it a lot and use the crown a lot. So I think they could have done with making the crown a little bit bigger. Uh, the grip is alright once you actually get the crown out, but it's just a nightmare. So what you have to do is sort of get it from the back. You can just see there's a little recess there where you can just uh, grab it. So you have to sort of pinch it and unscrew it and then eventually it does pop open and then you just have to get your fingernail in and pull it out luckily it is just one stage so it's just straight to your, uh, straight to your time there's no ghost date position so you can quickly adjust your time and actually you know the crown feels pretty good it feels solid uh, there's no feedback from it uh, it doesn't feel great or uh, notchy now getting it back in this is another nightmare you sort of have to get your tipsy fingers push it in and then twist and sometimes it goes in like it has now and other times it just refuses to and sort of springs back out little bit annoying so definitely uh, the crown could do uh, with a little bit tweaking i think it could be made a little bit bigger just to make it a little bit easier to uh, to use so what i'm going to do now is get this on wrist and show you what it wears like six inch wrist and you know what i have to say it wears very very nicely so i'm thinking <laughs> the rolex explorer would wear probably pretty similar as well not like i'm ever going to be able to afford one but that's for a different video but yeah it wears really really nice you can see the lugs uh, just fit perfectly on my uh, slim wrist so this one you know you can definitely pull off with a five and a half five and a three quarter inch wrist so yeah, definitely one for us guys with slim wrists. Of course, you know, you could rock it with a thicker wrist as well. But yeah, I think this is definitely more designed for uh, us guys and girls with uh, with slimmer wrists. So yeah, uh, as for comfort, I really like the profile. It sort of hugs my wrist really nicely. I do get a smidge of a gap, but because it's got a very, very subtly curved profile, it does actually hug my wrist quite nicely. Uh, the lugs don't overextend past my wrist, which is really nice aesthetically as well. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely a nice wearing watch for uh, us with slim wrists. I also like how the uh, lugs bring the bracelet down and it really drapes nicely over your wrist. And because the bracelet is so flexible, like I've mentioned already, it really does conform quite nicely because it's not overly rigid. So yeah, that's a big plus there. And like I've mentioned already, it's got plenty of micro adjustments. Uh, so getting a perfect fit is no problem whatsoever. I've removed all the links uh, and I've not had to use the micro adjustments and it fits absolutely perfectly on my wrist. So if you guys have got slimmer wrists than me, then it will fit, which is always great. So comfort on this bracelet is actually really impressive. Uh, the watch is not over heavy, like I said, at 100 gram. Um, you know, the weight's pretty well distributed. Uh, the watch head is obviously the heaviest part, but the uh, it doesn't like sort of wear that weight. It wears really nice to your wrist. It doesn't feel top heavy because it's only a really slender watch. So yeah, definitely a very, very comfortable wearing watch. I'm one of those ones, you know, you can put on and wear all day without any major concerns at all. So, yeah. Uh, next up is 
the loom. Right guys, so as we mentioned already, this watch does have loom, so we've got loomed indices and loomed hands, and do you know what, the loom is actually better than what I thought it was going to be, I thought it was going to be a little bit weak and not very well applied, but do you know what, it's actually pretty good, it gets quite bright, it lasts a fair amount of time, and it's a really nice colour as well, uh, of course you know it's not Seiko Orient Citizen good, but I think it's really, really impressive. Uh, it gets a little bit brighter than I was anticipating, and it lasts a little bit longer than I was expecting as well. So it definitely scores some good points in the loom department. Yes, it's not going to knock your socks off. It's not going to blow you away. It's not a loom monster, but it's still better than what I thought it was going to be and pretty adequate for the price point of this watch. So yeah, big plus there. Now we get on to the movement, and in the back of this watch is actually... A seagull movement. I actually uh, guessed that correctly in um, in the uh, unboxing video. I said it looked like a seagull movement, and it is actually the ST116, or in this case, it's uh, called the TY2806, uh, which is basically the same movement. It's just a different number for it. So you can see. I mean, the movement is very, very nicely decorated. We've got all these uh, machine marks on the bridge work and on the rotor, and it looks very, very nice. Also, like the uh, custom rotor as well. Uh, usually you don't get this rotor with this movement, you get a plain uh, looking one, uh, but they've actually done some uh, finishing work to it, and it looks a lot nicer uh, than um, than the stock one does. Uh, so this movement is a 21 joule, it's 21,600 beats per hour, so it's not high beat. The only letdown uh, I've noticed for the movement is the power reserve, it's only 36 hours. Standard is usually 40 hours, so it's 4 hours short. So it's not the best power reserve, but you know, it's it's not bad. If you wear it every other day, then you're going to be fine. If you wear it every now and then, you know, you're just going to have to wear it and then it'll start working again. Uh, so this movement does have hacking and it does have hand winding as well. Uh, accuracy is negative 35 to plus 10. Uh, so that's pretty good, but I've actually uh, done some research and you can regulate these to COSC certification, which is really impressive. So if you know a watchmaker and you want this, uh, you know, um, regulating, then take it to them and they can regulate it to be in, you know, with the Swiss automatic standards, which is pretty mind boggling, actually, uh, for a movement as inexpensive as this. So yeah, it's definitely got some strong suits. The movement is really nice in use as well. It's really smooth, no horrible great feedback. And I know people give Seagull movements a bit of slack, but do you know what, for this price point, I actually think it's not bad. And I think, you know, it's nice and refreshing to see a watch without a Seiko automatic in it. So yeah, props to Alpha for using something a little bit different. So now we get on to the verdict. What do we think? Oops, it's trying to escape. Uh, what do we think of this watch? Uh, so it's priced currently at $125, which is £90 and €105, Euro. and for that I think it's an absolute bargain. Yes, the bracelet isn't very good uh, in part, it definitely needs a milled clasp and uh, solid end links, but you know, that might have drove the price up a little bit, but I would have been, you know, willing to pay, uh, well I would pay extra for, you know, solid end links and a milled clasp, because it just makes it feel a much more premium product. But yeah, $125, 90 quid, I think that's definitely worth it. You might want to consider, you know, swapping out the bracelet. Uh, the lugs definitely need some more refinement, and the crown needs a little bit of work as well. But other than that, it is a fantastic watch. None of these are really massively deal breakers. I mean, the crown can get a little bit annoying, especially with it only having a 36-hour power reserve. But other than that, it is a cracking little watch. And yeah, if you love the uh, Rolex Explorer but can't stretch to the near on like four or five grand it costs, I think, I, I don't really know, uh, then, you know, this is a really good affordable alternative and I think it looks great and it's well made. Yeah, so it definitely uh, gets my seal of approval. Uh, link for purchasing is down in the description. So don't forget to subscribe for more content coming very, very soon. So thanks again. I'll see you soon.